Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 5 of DVMS super important questions and these are taken from the previous papers, don't miss any of these questions. If you have any questions, you can DM on Instagram here and if uh, and before starting, please like and subscribe, it helps make more videos like this and without wasting more time, let's get started. The first question is demonstrate two-phase locking protocol used for concurrency control, okay. Two-phase locking protocol means there will be two phases and uh, in the uh, locking technique we'll be using. Why we use locking technique? If two transactions are happening T1 and T2, in that case one data is being modified. Whichever modifies at last will be the data which will be updated. So the previous one's data changes will be lost and it is overwritten by the latest changes. For that we'll be using the locking protocol to lock the data at one time only one should be writing. Okay, like that. It is used for concurrency control. So our transaction is set to follow two-phase protein, uh, locking protocol if all locking operations read lock and write lock two types of lock are there read uh, read lock means you cannot read the data unless someone else is reading write lock means you cannot write to the data unless some other transaction is writing precede the first unlock operations in the transaction okay all locking should happen previous to unlocking okay all the unlocking so first one is growing phase or expanding phase in which new locks and items can wide on uh, but none can be released. The second is shrinking phase in which the existing locks can be released but no new locks can be acquired. If lock conversion is allowed then upgrading of locks from read to write can happen or re, uh, write to read can happen in the uh, expanding phase and the shrinking phase respectively. Okay, So this is called as two phase uh, locking protocol and this you have to write in the exam in, in case this question comes. Okay. Example is given of two transactions T1 and T2. In T1 and T2, there are two items X and Y. Okay, so first this is uh, reading the item Y and performing some operation on it. Then it is reading the item X and performing some operation on it. And T2 is doing the reverse. First it is doing on X, then it is Y. And since both are doing it together, in that case it can follow any order. These two will happen first, then this will happen, then this will happen. Like that, it can ha happen any order. So in the case when T1 is followed by T2, means T1 comes after T2. Okay, in that case X will be 50 and Y is 80. In case T2 comes comes after t1 it will x will be 70 and y will be 50 we are getting different answers and we cannot guarantee which will come first which can come second it is purely based on how much time it's taking to operate okay anyone can happen so in that case the different answers are coming you have to avoid this one so in that case we will be using the locking operation so we will be locking until and unless it has used it totally and then after that we will unlock so that it will uh, not interfere with x and y values so in this case it is um the two-phase locking protocol is present and in this case it is not present. Here we will get one answer, here we will get multiple answers. Okay. Why is concurrency control needed? Demonstrate with an example. Concurrency control is required to ensure correctness, consistency and isolation. Three things, consistency, uh, correctness and isolation and integrity of the database when multiple transactions executed simultaneously. Okay, let's take an example here. Suppose that in your account, how much uh, money is there? 5,000 is there. Okay, and two transactions happen. You withdraw 1,000 means you take 1,000 from the bank and you put 2,000 in the bank. Okay, what you did? You took 1,000 from the bank and you put in the bank. Now in the system, how much it should be? You took 1,000 means it became 4,000 and you deposited 2,000 means it should be 6,000 now, right? Finally, answer should be 6000. But if this is not following the uh, <coughs> locking protocol, in that case, what happens? Suppose first uh, 5000 is there, you read the balance, it's 5000. Then what happened? Here also for deposition, uh, it will read the balance 5000. So the first transaction, then it will subtract 1000, so it will remain 4000. And in second transaction, this has not yet been reflected in the amount, right? This is just calculation. Writing will reflect. But if I think what happened, this read the balance and it uh, made changes to that means it added 5000 to this, uh, I mean 2000 it added to this value, which is the older value, right? Because it is not uh, rewritten now. It will be rewritten at this point, but before that only it added. So it is now 7000 and after that it wrote 4000, but here I have 7000. So it will uh, rewrite the 7000 value from this variable. So what happens at the end? I have 7000, which is not the amount of money, which actually is because it is taken 2000 and uh, taken 1000 and added 2000 that will be 6000 right but here in the in this case it is showing as 7000 right, sir so without such things can happen that's why with concurrency control first it will uh, do the 4000 thing and after that only t1 uh, will release the lock after which t2 will start the operation after the lock is released it will start the operation and take this value and it will add 2000 to it so 6000 will be the final answer so types of issues avoided by concurrency control first one is lost updates so i just uh, as i would discuss the uh, this type of uh, Mistake is called as lost update and dirty reads can happen, which is uh, reading uncommitted data. Okay, unrepeatable reads can happen. Same query gives different results. And phantom reads can happen where new rows are added between two queries.
is in between this query and this query is rejected in this query but taken in this query so in that case it will give inconsistent answers okay conclusion is that concurrency control ensures correct execution of transaction data consistency and isolation per asset properties okay next question is what is no sql explain cap theorem the system that have databases other than sql okay along with sql other types of databases which has it is called as no sql example is google developed the big table which is used in gmail google maps and website indexing amazon developed the no sql system called as dynamo db that is available through the amazon cloud services and other ones are the mongo db couch db document based no sql and the document stores sql like neo4j also okay now what is cap theorem cap means consistency availability and partition tolerance consistency means among the replicated copies all the copy should have the same data availability means whenever we want to write some data or read the data it should be available partition tolerance in the face of nodes in the system being partitioned by a network fault it should tolerate it and it should handle it gracefully okay availability means each read and write operation for the request data will either be processed successfully or will receive a message operation cannot be completed partially it will not happen okay partition tolerance means system can continue operating if the network connecting nodes has a fault okay if there is a fault in two or more partitions still it can continue the process based on some backup then it is called as partition tolerance consistency means all the node have same copies of the data not different different copies okay and cap theorem states any two only can be possible uh, among the three so choose which is the best two for your scenario okay next is what are document based no sql system explain crud operations in mongodb document based no sql system means stored as collections of self describing documents like json or xml okay these are the no uh, sql system documents okay it, it is called document stores and no schema is required because two jsons can be completely different but still in the same space okay and no, new documents can include new attributes which are not present in the existing ones so mongodb uses format okay it is a type of json only but it is faster and more efficient okay now firstly we have to create a collection like for example create a collection project where all the details related to project will be stored okay the crud operation means create read update delete so create first insertion uh, how we will do db dot collection name whichever the collection you created for example if it is project just as above we created if we will be inserting there what we want to insert we will be inserting that uh, there okay like the uh, document next is read okay read means finding the documents db dot collection name to find and which condition you want like for example the index value between 10 and 20 all those 10 records will be fetched okay update means you have to update some value to a new value okay so db dot update collection update which condition uh, if it is there that should be updated set what values to update from the previous to the new value okay delete means you want to delete the values from the collection delete db dot collection name dot remove whichever condition uh, satisfies the uh, row whichever row satisfies the condition which is met here that will be removed okay after this command Next is what is NoSQL graph database? Explain Neo4j. Okay, graph database in this uh, the data is stored as nodes and relationships as edges. Graph means what? There is an edge like this. Okay, and there will be uh, the, this is called as relationship between the nodes and this is the data in Neo4j. Okay, so both nodes and relationship can have labels and properties. Okay, so Neo4j data model nodes can be entities which can have multiple labels. Relationships are direct connections. It can have uh, types and properties. Properties are stored using the key value format. Okay, now see. In the uh, EER comparison, ER -ER comparison, which is new 4J and uh, entity relationship, node is called as entity, label is called as entity or type of subclass, relationship is called relationship instance, and type is called the type only, and property is called as attribute. Okay, new 4J uh, relationships and is a real DBMS. Now, an example of uh, new 4J, which is the implementation of new 4J, is Cypher. Uh, Cypher. Okay, so to create, uh, we'll be using this syntax: create employee, employee ID one, and name John. Multiple labels can be given person, employer, manager, and relationships will be like this. Employee works for the department, like that will be specifying. Okay. Now indexing and schema options of the schema is optional, and the index is created for the employee based on the employee ID. Okay. Now some characteristics are there. Enterprise versus community edition based on the capabilities. We will be sometimes using enterprise, sometimes using community edition. They have both advantages and disadvantages. Graph uh, graph visualization can be done using the tools, and it is a master slave concept. It can be configured on a cluster of distributed nodes or computers okay and caching is also present and logical locks are there to recover from failures uh, in case of uh, referring what has gone wrong okay so these are the characteristics that's all for the uh, module 5 of dvms and if you want this video helpful please do like and subscribe it helps me go on this like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you next